Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. If you'd like to find out more about our conference, we're not a caucus, we're a conference. There's a difference. But if you'd like to find out more about our conference, the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., you're welcome to do so simply by going to our webpage. Our webpage is Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot org. Now, I know that's long, but it's very illustrative, I believe, and very important. Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot org. Now, we do welcome you to the show today. It is time for us to go live in just a moment on Crusade Radio. But we're going to wait just for a little bit because we want to make sure that the previous audio show is over and gone before we try to dial in. So we'll just wait a couple of minutes. In the meantime, let me tell you a little bit more about the Congressional Prayer Conference. We have uh, several avenues or arms or divisions, if you will. One of our divisions is one that is called First Responders Prayer Team. First Responders Prayer Team. And the gentleman that was running the camera today in Brea uh, up at uh, Congressman Ed Ross's office was Peter Maxan. Peter Maxan is a deputy prayer warrior for the Congressional Prayer Conference and indeed the facilitator of the first responders prayer team. And there are thousands of people on that team and we would encourage you to be a part of it as well. Now, if you'd like to be a part of the prayer team right now, this prayer line is open. We're on what we refer to as the CCC, the three C's. That three C stands for Congressional Communication Channel, and that's what that's all about. So we would encourage you. Now, there's a phone number and an access code that you must use in order to come on this communications channel from the United States Congress. Now, if you'd like to be a part, all you got to do is pick up your phone, your iPhone, your cell phone, whatever you'd like to use, and call 712-432-1690. After you pick up, after you call that number and you're picked up, they will ask you to identify yourself and also ask you for your access code. Now, the access code is identifiable only to me, not to you. And if you would prefer not to identify yourself, you certainly have that privilege and do not have to identify yourself. The request for that is simply that, a request, nothing more. So, call 712-432-1690, put in your access code, 399-430-POUND, and you'll be able to join us on the air at that time. So, join us. We're expecting some callers from folks that are boots on the ground, as well as prayer in the air. And I want to remind you that, uh, let me just grab one more piece of paper here, yeah. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, what we're doing here is threefold, and we'll talk about the threefold chord in a few moments. But before we do, we have our first caller on the line. Caller, uh, you're welcome to identify yourself or stay anonymous, whichever you feel comfortable with. But please share with us a uh, prayer request, a praise report, uh, what's going on, and uh, God bless you as you do. Go ahead, caller. All right, go back and give that one more time. If they'd like to go to YouTube, they go to Lone Star 1776, correct? That's right, and there's lots of different Facebook pages set up for Ken Hovind support as well. Amen. And, by the way, if you go to my Facebook, Wiley Drake, you will see the two reports, the two updates that have already been done, 
and there'll be more to follow uh, there at uh, Team Hovine. And uh, uh, I know our folk can go and read them, but uh, give us a little bit of a synopsis or scenario, if you will, of what's going on. We know that it's boots on the ground, prayer in the air, and now uh, share with us what's uh, happening, would you please? Well, uh, another interesting day in court as they proceeded to parade through the witnesses that have uh, flown in to say, yes, uh, this is a piece of paper that he signed and all kinds of crazy nonsense. And uh, then there was the uh, prosecution complaining that there were people outside with uh, jury nullification signs, and uh, <laughs> then the judge recommended maybe they'll buy the lunch so they can stay inside and won't have to go outside and see those signs. Oh, my goodness. It sounded like, yeah, it sounded like a bribery. Yeah. Well, the court's good at that, and uh, the court's good at not allowing people to... Uh, do what is constitutionally protected. It's my understanding from one of the boots on the ground, Brother Rudy Davis, that the court has instructed people that they are allowed to have a Bible, but they cannot open it. And, That's uh, correct. And again today, they're not allowed to take any notes whatsoever. Uh, one of the interesting things I heard was that they're allowed to have a, 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 a local... I don't know if it's a newspaper reporter or somebody locally is allowed to go in there and take notes on a pad with paper and a pen, but not people from out of town like Rudy or anybody else. Not we the people. It's they want their people. Oh, that's right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, go to, uh, and I'm going to ask our dear prayer warrior to give it one more time. If you want to go, you can go to the different places that you already know about, but go especially to YouTube. Give that one more time, would you please, where they can get the updates? A Lone Star 1776 is the channel, and you just hit uh, video uploads, and you'll see all the, uh, all the latest uploads right there. Um, the other best place to check for live updates is on FreeCatHoven.com. All right, freekenthoven.com, and for those of you who may not know, it's K-E-N-T-H-O-V-I-N-D, Kent Hoven, freekenthoven.com, and go there to Lone Star 1776 as well, and get the reports live from the prayer warriors, live from prayer in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about a threefold cord that the Bible talks about. <clears throat> and initially, <coughs> excuse me, we shared that there was the boots on the ground, the prayer in the air, and action. <coughs> That's still there. But now it's not only boots on the ground and prayer in the air, but the action of reporting. The boots on the ground prayer warriors that will be from time to time on the ground or in the air, are indeed sharing there at Lone Star 1776, as well as FreeKentHoven.com. You can go there and get not only uh, their boots on the ground and prayer in the air, but their reports. And that's the third chord, and that third chord, of course, is action. We need to do some things. Not only be boots on the ground and prayer in the air, but to take action. And one of the things that we suggested early on in the area of the third chord that makes it very difficult to break, and that was the action of sending a fax, a hard copy fax on your own fax machine if you would like to remain anonymous I would suggest you go to a local office supply store, pay them a small amount of money, usually about a dollar to a dollar and a half uh, for one page, and that goes from their fax to Margaret Casey Rogers' fax machine, and they cannot trace it to you. I would suggest that, by the way, but for those of you who are a little bit more gutsy, those of you who don't care if uh, 
Margaret Casey Rogers and her hoodlums have your fax number, use your own personal fax number. I uh, have done both. I've used my own fax. I also used one from an office uh, supply store, not because I was trying to hide anything, but simply because I wanted to see, I wanted to be able to let people know what the cost was, and it's about a buck for one page. Now, uh, those are the three different chords, boots on the ground, prayer in the air, and action. And there are plenty of other actions that can be done. I had several callers today. We did an action this morning, not only boots on the ground, but we took action by going up to a place near us not in Pensacola, but here in California, and put boots on the ground near the United States Senate, I mean the United States House of Representatives, and their office there of one of the representatives, uh, Mr. Ed Royce, because he is the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, in Washington, he's the chairman of that committee, and we wanted to let him know that we are supportive of him as well as Benjamin Netanyahu, who spoke this morning and many of you heard. And so we put boots on the ground, prayer in the air, and we also put feet to our prayers by taking action. We sent a fax. We also went before uh, this congressman's office to be supportive of him, to be supportive of Mr. Netanyahu. And, of course, all during the day, we've been praying in the air, praying for Mr. Netanyahu, his safety. And, indeed, uh, my understanding was I was not able to watch the proceeding, but it's my understanding that there were many, many, several standing ovations to certain segments of Mr. Netanyahu's uh speech there uh, before the United States government. So, caller, if you have anything else you'd like to share, you're welcome to do so. If we have any other callers on the line, uh, you're welcome to chime in, ask a question, or make a comment as you feel led to do so. We want you to pray. One of the ways that we have not only been boots on the ground and prayer in the air, and action, but that third one, we took action uh, by simply giving you some action for your prayer request. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Now, fervent just means hot, and uh, but effectual means to have a great effect. And the way our prayers can have a greater effect, not only a great effect, but a greater effect, is by simply adding, according to the Bible, according to the prophet Jeremiah, according to the prophet Isaiah and others, when you add someone's identification, when you add someone's name uh, to a prayer list, that adds strength to your prayer. So we can pray for people, in general, boots on the ground, but we can also, in specific, pray for Rudy Davis because he's boots on the ground. We can also pray for uh, uh, Brother Ron Brock, who is boots on the ground, and Brother Alan Hoyle, boots on the ground, and uh, others that uh, have been mentioned. And I would give our caller, as well as anyone else, an opportunity to add a name uh, to this effectual, fervent prayer list, if you so desire. I'd like to lift up Gerald Barnes, who's uh, with Rudy Davis right now. And uh, there's another gentleman that's with him named Jason Snow, who's also uh, attending the court as well. And there's a lot of crazy things going on here behind the scenes that we're not talking about because we don't like to give the trolls any attention at all. Amen. But we're not scared. They're doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but, but it doesn't stop us. We don't even look back. We just keep marching forward. 
forward. Well, that's exactly what we're to do, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, marching on in the army of Jesus, we will not allow uh, these people to intimidate us or to tell us what we can and cannot do. We, that is, these men, Brother Joe, Brother Jason, uh, Brother Rudy, uh, Brother uh, Allen, and uh, also uh, our, our dear friend, uh, Brother Ron, all these fellows, ladies and gentlemen, are not lawbreakers. They're not troublemakers. They are godly men who love the Lord Jesus Christ, but who are not afraid to take a stand. So pray for these men. Pray that God will continue to bless them as they put feet to their prayers, boots on the ground and prayer in the air. And uh, we're not going to give uh, the benefit of the doubt to those naysayers. Uh, we know they're dragging in all kind of naysayers, and and they're uh, trying to say you cannot open a Bible in the court. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I remind those judges, we're in the United States of America. And I would remind, as I did not too long ago, a judge, I was in a courtroom that the judge was in charge of, and he was a very ungodly uh, judge and a very vicious and a vile judge. And so when we were in the courtroom, the bailiff watched, and as the judge came into the courtroom, the judge said, or the bailiff said, all rise, honorable so-and-so, such-and-such, in the court. And everybody but this crazy old preacher stood up. I did not stand up because I interpreted what they were asking was for me to honor that judge. I was not about to honor that judge. I knew his record. And I knew he was a vicious, vile, alcoholic, drug addict, and yet he was still on the bench. And so I refused to stand. The bailiff said to me, sir, you must stand. And I said, no, I must not. And I reminded that judge as well as that bailiff that the reason, the history behind standing when the magistrate came in had nothing to do with honoring the magistrate. The tradition and the history of that goes way back. And that tradition of standing was because when the magistrate came in the room, on one arm he had the Bible, and on the other arm he had the law book. And he would come into the court, and the people would stand to honor the law book, as well as the Holy Scripture. That's why they stood. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't believe me, look it up. You'll find out. And so I said, since the lawgiver is God, and since the magistrate did not have a Bible in his arm, nor a law book, I would not honor him by standing. And I was warned about that, but nevertheless, I did not. Now, I will stand to honor an honorable person. But if they're dishonorable, I will not lie. I will not stand up and honor them uh, and say they're honorable when they're not. So the courts are out of order, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to put them back in order. And uh, quite often, for example, when I've been asked to testify in court, uh, the clerk of the court or the person leading in the court uh, before my testimony would say, do you solemnly swear that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And I said, no, I will not swear to that. I will assert to you and I will say to you, I will be honest, but I will not swear. Because the Bible tells me, don't swear by anything, heaven or earth. And so I will not swear. 
uh, in court or any other place for that matter. And uh, I've gotten in trouble sometimes for that, been criticized for being picky. But I just believe we ought to be accurate, and I will not swear. Not because I don't like the court. I don't like it, but that's not my reason for not swearing. My reason for not swearing is because God said don't swear. And that's not just talking about cursing. It says swear by nothing, heaven, earth, or tree, or anything else. So we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, we need to stand up and speak up. Anyone else on the line want to share anything else at this time? All right. I will... Con- Uh, I think he is, yes. I think he's the one that has the uh, courthouse website. Okay, if you're talking to him again, if you could ask him to give me a call, that would be great. I sure will. And Shorty, if you're listening, uh, please uh, let me know. I'll give you Aaron's phone number. You can call her. Uh, and uh, he's, he's, he's called me lots of times before, and uh, that would be great. I, and he can call the same number. All right. It'll just be forwarded to me anyway. Shorty, if you would, call that same number uh, that you've called before, uh, the Davis number, and uh, call and talk with her, and I know she'll be more than happy to hear from you. Uh, Shorty has done a great job. He is um, also a great researcher. He has done quite a bit of research in the legality of what's going on, uh, in reference to not only this case, but many others. I, too, have done a little bit, not nearly the magnitude that he had, but I've done a little bit. That's why I knew about uh, the tradition of standing to honor the coming in of the Word of God and so forth. And uh, we just need to understand. Thank you uh, for asking for that, Shorty. Call Aaron Davis, please, if you would. And anyone else now on the line that would like to share Uh, Please feel free to go ahead. All right. Anybody that would like to jump in and ask a question or share a comment, you're welcome to do so. This is an open line, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we call the CCC, Congressional Communications Channel. And it's just that. It's congressional. It is for communications, and it is a channel. The phone number, if you're watching us on television or listening on the radio, that phone number is 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399-430-POUND. Now, I'm going to dial another number right now and put on the air with us Crusade Radio. Crusade Radio has carried us for many, many years. When I say us, the Wiley Drake Show, the Congressional Prayer Conference, and they carry us even now, and we need to call them. I'll call them right now, and you'll hear a ringing, and then you'll hear us connect, and then we will merge that call. And uh, I want to say to Brother Mel Pyatt and his dear wife, Shimon Porterfield Pyatt, thank you for their working with us and sharing with us. And now we're going to merge that call, and we have the two communication lines merged now. We have the CCC, that is the Congressional Communications Channel, and Crusade Radio. Both those are merged together in our system in the CCC, and we thank the Lord for that. And if any of you would like to call in uh, and share with us in any way, uh, we have several ways you can do it. One way, of course, I've already given you, and that is the CCC line, 712 number, and so forth. But we also have another number, and uh, we're, uh, I guess, infamously say, 
that this other phone number we have has the same area code that Barry Satoro has. Now, those of you who know Barry Satoro know he is AKA, that is also known as Barack Hussein Obama. And we do have another number that's in the same area code that he is in. And another number you can call us on is 202-747-4839. 202-747-4839. And you can talk to us on that number as well. Now, I want to share with you, uh, anyone else on the line or or have anything else they'd like to share before I go into a little different uh, avenue. All right. As you know, today was a very, very important day. On Tuesday, March the 3rd, and please go to uh, the follow-ups, please go to the updates and read those. But I want to give you an update uh, from someone who is boots on the ground, and prayer in the air on a very regular basis. He's our brother in Christ. He is a reporter. He is an analysis, and he does it from the perspective of the Bible and from a prophetic point of view. And this gentleman's name is Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson. And I would encourage you to go to Mr. Wilson's report. I'm going to be sharing from it tonight, as I quite often do here on the Wiley Drake Show, because of his effectiveness, because of his biblical point of view, and because of his prophetic teaching, I like to share with you what he calls the daily jot. Daily, as in D-A-I-L-Y, and J-O-T, Daily Jot. Now, when Mr. Bill Wilson writes about God and Jesus, he means Yahweh in the Hebrew language and Yeshua HaMashiach for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are not only the names, but the meaning of the names are very significant. Now today, on March the 3rd, this day is literally a modern Esther story, a modern Esther story, with, in all honesty, a little bit of a dangerous twist. Since the early 2000s, the Ayatollahs of Persia, For those of you who studied, you know that Persia is a biblical term for a country that attacked God's people. And for those of you who know any Iranians, you will know they are all very proud of their Persian background. And you will know that if you study that Persia became Iran. But since the early 2000s, the Ayatollahs of Persia have been developing nuclear technology. We talked about this back in 2000 when we first began the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. If you remember or you go back to the archive, you will hear Wiley Drake on the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. in the year 2000 warning about the nuclear proliferation in Persia, i.e. in Iran. They have been developing nuclear technology to advance what they call the peace of Islam. During that time frame, since 2000, even up to today, on this third day of March, in the year of our Lord, 2015, 15 years later, even to this day, the leadership of Persia and Iran have stated repeatedly 
that they sought to wipe Israel off the map. They have said very clearly, that's why we want a nuclear weapon, because we want to wipe Israel off the map. The United States has participated in a United Nations negotiating team of Britain, France, China, and Russia to try to get Iran to stop its nuclear program. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that for a country like Iran, Persia, who says they want to wipe out Israel, have no business with nuclear power. France believes that, China believes that, and Russia believes that, as well as Great Britain. And they've been trying everything they can to stop this nuclear proliferation. Until now, where the U.S. president has taken it upon himself to negotiate directly with the terrorists, has it taken it upon himself to negotiate directly with the terrorist state that has called for the destruction of both the United States and Israel? Why do we negotiate with someone who has said they want to wipe out America and they want to wipe out Israel? These negotiations appear to be a ruse to allow Iran to continue its nuclear program under the guise of developing energy. They say they need more electricity. That's why they want the nukes. Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. On Monday, on Monday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the American Israel Public Affairs Committee saying, and I quote, as Prime Minister of Israel, I have a moral obligation to speak up in the face of these dangers while there's still time to speak up. Mr. Netanyahu's contention is that the U.S. President's solution of giving Iran a decade to enrich uranium for peaceful purposes, yeah, gravely endangers Israel. For Iran and Islam, peaceful purposes very well translate to the peace of Islam, meaning all nations, United States and Israel, submit to Islam. This U.S. president says that Netanyahu's visit to the U.S. and subsequent speeches to the AIPAC and Congress are indeed a distraction to the greater issues of Iran exercising its nuclear rights. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is basking in the glory of his newfound diplomatic BFF, best friends forever. The Iranian negotiating team is that. Reuters reports that Kerry and Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javed Zarif met for about 90 minutes on the first of what could be three days of talks in the Swiss lakeside town of Montreux on curbing Iran's nuclear program. Coming out of that meeting, Kerry warned, here's Mr. Kerry's warning, and I quote him, 
We are concerned by reports that suggested selective details of the ongoing negotiations will be discussed publicly in the coming days. Doing so would make it more difficult to reach the goal that Israel and others say they share in order to get a good deal. Israel has said it opposes Kerry's deal, and I think that's wise. There is a modern story here of Esther with a dangerous twist, Bill says. Iran's Ayatollah is playing the part of King Ahasuerus of Persia. The U.S. president is Haman, the king's servant, bent on destroying the Jews. Carrie is Haman's lieutenant. Netanyahu plays both Esther and her uncle Mordecai, both trying to save the Jews from destruction. The drama is being played out during the holy days of Purim, the feast celebrating the delivery of the Jewish people from the execution squads of Haman. Esther 9.28 says, and I quote, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. We all must remember, pray that the American Haman does not prevail. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've just shared with you is part and parcel of a report from our dear friend, uh, Brother Bill Wilson. And if you want to find out more about him and about his report, The Daily Jot, simply go to dailyjot.com. Dailyjot.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in some dangerous, dangerous times. And we need to know that. Now, I want to move on to another item of prayer. I have a dear, dear friend by the name of Dr. Scott Lively. Dr. Scott Lively is doing the same thing we're doing, but in a broader area. Dr. Scott Lively says this is a call to action to all Christian believers. Pastors, leaders, talk show hosts, that's one of me, media figures, activists, that's you folks, street evangelists, and prayer warriors. Let us band together, Scott says, in the spirit of Second Chronicles 7.14. You know what that says, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. We are coming together in the spirit of that scripture to promote and conduct a continual prayer vigil and stand out for marriage at SCOTUS the Supreme Court of the United States, or any federal courthouse for those who can't get to Washington from now until the ruling comes out, probably in June. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be boots on the ground and prayer in the air for this Supreme Court decision that will come out probably in June and probably is going to come out saying that sodomy is not a sin anymore, that sodomy is okay. This is a general call, Dr. Scott says, 
This is a general call to all believers to go to Washington, D.C. alone or in groups to pray and to demonstrate, to pray and to hold signs like they're doing down at the courthouse with Ken Hovind. Churches and other organizations can choose dates or times to rally their own troops if they like and our whole press conferences. But let's all just put out the word to whatever circle of influence we have and let the Holy Spirit stir your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, as the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference, I will, as your leader, support this effort. I am asking, as Scott does, every Christian and pro-family radio talk show host to promote this vigil and perhaps do a broadcast from the site. We will broadcast from the site. Large organizations could provide logistical support to help people coordinate with groups scheduled to be there at a certain time. But until then, Scott Lively says, I will do my best to help at sdllaw at gmail.com. Scott Lively says, I'm on my way to the D.C. area. District of Columbia, but we call it the District of Christ. Scott says, I'm on my way to D.C. to kick this off spiritually. Not a big deal. He says, and I quote Scott Lively, just me and my wife. You see, back in 2000, just me and my wife promoted and started the Congressional Prayer Conference. My dear wife is in heaven now for four years, but the prayer meeting goes on. He says, just me and my wife with a standout from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now that's Washington, D.C. time. On Monday, the 9th, and we invite you all to come or to send others to join us in prayer. We will be boots on the ground and prayer in the air on the ninth day of this month, Monday the ninth, and we invite you to be a part of it. Scott says, I will do the same in front of my own local federal courthouse. Go to your own courthouse, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to go to Springfield, Mass. Over the next three weeks and months, at times, that will be announced later. In the meantime, don't wait for somebody else to organize your prayer vigil. Just go. This is our last stand, ladies and gentlemen, for marriage as a free society. If the Supreme Court, if the Supreme Court declares sodomy marriage a constitutional right by judicial fiat, there will be nothing left for us to do but resist. Did you hear that? There'll be nothing left to do but resist if the Supreme Court rules sodomy marriage is okay. Only God, Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, can save us from this calamity and this disgrace of defiling His, that is God's, institution of marriage 
in our official national policy. Let us take the authority we have in him and the freedom we have as Americans to join together to surround the federal judges with such a hedge of prayer that they will be forced to bow their knees to the one who created marriage as the foundation of all human civilization. One man, one woman, Dr. Scott Lively, is going to be one of our leaders in this. And I talked to Scott earlier today, and I shared with him that we, the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship, the Chairman Wiley Drake, we want to join in this calling out of Second Chronicles 714. We have friends in Washington at the Family Research Council, and they have written for us a prayer that I have memorized, and I hope you will as well. That prayer is written by men, but it's based on the Word of God. And it will be our prayer during this standing out and standing up for marriage, one man, one woman. And that prayer says this, I will answer God's call to fall on my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance, so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. Ladies and gentlemen, please join. Please communicate with Dr. Scott Lively. His email is S for Scott, D for David, L L. A W L L A W. So it's S D L L A W at Gmail dot com. At Gmail dot com. This will be a vigil for marriage at the Supreme Court and all federal courts. Dr. Scott Lively is a leader and a prayer warrior. Be with us. Help us. Join him and join others as we are boots on the ground around our federal courthouses and the federal courthouse called SCOTUS. Pray with us. Stand up, stand out, and pray with us for our federal court system, and for all those who serve our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have something you would like to share, give me a call right now, 712-432-1690. Put in your access code, 399-430-POUND. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the date is on Monday, March the 9th. That is next Monday. The Lord willing and the Lord provide, I will be boots on the ground at the Supreme Court. If I cannot be there, I will be at the federal courthouse nearest our studio here in California, and we will, at 8 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, and at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will stand up. We will stand out. We will pray. Will you join us? Will you join Dr. Scott Lively? And will you join me 
to kick off this spiritually with a standout from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Monday the 9th. Boots on the ground and prayer in the air, ladies and gentlemen. Please join us. And I have already spoken to Scott, and I've told Scott that if he will call us at that hour, we will broadcast on the Wiley Drake Show that prayer meeting from our nation's capital and from courthouses all over America. If you cannot go to Washington, please go to your nearest federal courthouse. Call us on the CCC line and let us pray with you and for you as you stand for one man, one woman, as you stand for marriage as the Bible teaches us to do. So would you do that? Ladies and gentlemen, we have 10 minutes left in this program, and then we'll be going off the air. But I would encourage you, join us, join us, boots on the ground, prayer in the air, on March the 9th at the federal courthouse level. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court of the United States is considering the decision as to whether or not they will legally allow sodomite marriage. No matter how legal they make it, sodomy is still a sin. Please stand with us. Please go to your federal courthouse, either in Washington, D.C., or in your own state. Join us for a courthouse prayer meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts may say we can't open our Bibles in the court. They may say you can't pray, but they can't stop us from praying at the Supreme Court of the United States and the federal courthouse all over our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please join Dr. Scott Lively and myself and his wife and other men and women. Please stand for this call to action for all Christians, believers, pastors, leaders, talk show hosts, media figures, activists, street evangelists, and prayer warriors. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please join us and band together in the spirit of Second Chronicles 714 to promote and conduct a continual prayer vigil and a standout for marriage at our Supreme Court or any federal court for those who can't get to D.C. From now until the ruling comes out, probably sometime in June, we will continue to be boots on the ground and prayer in the air at the federal courthouse in our area, at the courthouse in Washington, D.C. But Scott and I are asking every Christian, every Christian, to please promote this prayer vigil. This prayer vigil will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Two hours, ladies and gentlemen, of prayer. Jesus said to his disciples, could you not pray one hour? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Scott and I are asking you to pray two hours. 
on March the 9th from 11 a.m. East Coast time to 1 p.m. Please join us in a prayer vigil for biblical marriage and against same-sex marriage and against sodomy marriage and against the court that may rule wrongly in that decision. Please join us before then and after then. But please join us on March the 9th. That will be 8 a.m. here in California. That will be 11 a.m. in our nation's capital. Please join us to pray for those two hours of prayer vigil. Spiritual prayer for biblical marriage and prayer against sodomite marriage. Two hours to pray, ladies and gentlemen. Please join us in those prayer meetings. I don't know where the Lord wants me to be on the ninth day of March. I do know this. He wants me to pray. No doubt about that. I have been challenged by my friend, Dr. Scott Lively. And after that, God challenged me to be involved. That's why I called him. And so, my friend, Scott Lively challenged me to pray. And my Lord, Yahshua HaMashiach, my God, Yahweh, challenged me to pray. And I will pray on that day. I will add, and you're welcome to do so as well, but I will add fasting to my prayer. On the ninth day of March, I will pray and fast for biblical marriage and against a Supreme Court that might approve sodomite marriage. I will pray against them and I will pray for them and we will pray for marriage as Jesus honored it with the beginning of his ministry at the wedding of Cana of Galilee. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a special two-hour prayer vigil on March the 9th. Join me in Washington, D.C. Join me in California. And join me in the other 50 states. Now, beginning tomorrow, On the fourth day of March, we will officially, we will officially pray for that prayer vigil, that two-hour prayer vigil on March the 9th. From the fourth to the ninth is five days. Please pray with us on the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth. For those prayer vigils, please do that. Would you please? We thank the Lord that you can join us. Starting tomorrow at 5 a.m. California time, we will begin to pray for this prayer vigil for March the 9th. Please pray with us. Please join us in prayer. The prayer vigil is two hours. One hour for the biblical principle of one man, one woman. And pray against the sodomite marriage that might be approved 
by the Supreme Court. We pray that it will not. And we will be praying every day. Amen. Do we have someone on the line you'd like to share with us? Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. We will be boots on the ground, prayer in the air, and we are setting up for this special day on March the 9th, and uh, we've got about two minutes left in this program, and I would like to ask anyone that would like to pray to lead us in prayer at this time. Do we have a caller on the line? Jerry Rogers, God, God bless you, my brother. We're talking about prayer in the air. Can you lead us in prayer? We're going to be praying not only for Kent Hovine, but we're praying for a special prayer vigil that we're going to be having on March the 9th for two hours, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., to pray for biblical marriage and against sodomite marriage that the Supreme Court might bring about. Would you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, our dear Heavenly Father, please answer the prayers of the good people that you have put down here on earth to spread your word and your beliefs and your understandings of having a good marriage between a man and a woman to be able to create more families. Yeah. You said go forth and multiply. Thank you for all that you've given us. In me, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My dear brother, thank you for your prayer. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share at this time? Well, we're broadcasting live and we'll continue to do so 23 hours a week on this prayer line. And on the ninth day of March, we will gather at the federal courthouse level in Washington, D.C., and in all 50 states. I would like to ask any of you out there, if you will commit yourself either to go to the Supreme Court in D.C. or to a federal courthouse in your area, Would you please contact myself or Scott Lively and say we will join you in prayer on a federal level at a federal courthouse, either in Washington or somewhere in one of the states. If you would commit that to us, please email me, Wiley, Wiley, at att dot net. Wiley, Wiley, at att dot net and say, I will join at one of the federal courthouses, either the one in D.C. or the one in my state. And if you'll commit that, we'd be more than happy to announce that to the rest of the world. Well, folks, it's time for us to go now on this show. I want to pray and I want to close us out with our prayer based on Second Chronicles 7.14 that the Family Research Council has given us, and that is simply this. I will answer God's call to fall on my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. Good night. God bless you. Remember, the theme for this program is based on Micah 6, 8. In Matthew 23, 23, both of those companion scriptures say, Do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. May God bless you. May God help you. Good night and God bless.